Welcome to our Timu haul. But yo, this is awful and it feels like I could rip it apart right now. So I put in a massive order of a bunch of stuff and we're gonna just do a haul today and see if this stuff is good or it's just not what I expected. Cause again, you never know when you see this stuff online in the little picture, like you hope it's good, but you don't know, especially when it comes at a super cheap price. I'm always like, hmm. I'm gonna have to try this stuff on and give you the truth because you know what? You see girls dancing around on TikTok and everything and they're like, this is the best thing I've ever found in my life. Look how cute I am. And like, it says like, and it's $5. And you're like, oh my gosh. I don't know if I wanna participate in fast fashion like this, but also like you kind of add to cart, you know, do you know, like it just happens. Hey y'all, I'm Shauna. Welcome in or welcome back. Today, we are finally talking about Timu. And this video, I am talking about why Timu is so addicting. What they've done to really create an exciting and dopamine <laughs> powerhouse of an experience that draws people in and keeps them coming back for more. This video is not intended to shame people for shopping on Timu or for being interested in shopping on Timu. I think that, I think with Timu, like I'm interested in the like addictive portion and the, sh the experience of shopping on Timu. I think it helped people understand their own experience shopping on this kind of website and others. But there also is like the ethical and sustainable implications. And if you do want to read up on them, there are people who I think have done a better job than I could have on talking about it. So I will link those videos if you want like additional information and additional opinions and takes on this website. So I decided, you know, it's finally time. We're finally going to go check out Timu. We're going to, we're going to see what it's about. We're going to assess the situation. And, uh, I've wanted to make a video on it for some time. So I went on and I was shocked. My mouth was on the floor um, by how cheap everything is. So after I went down the rabbit hole and was looking on Timu, I started watching Timu hauls. I wanted to know what people said about it when they bought stuff. What were they buying, number one? What did they say about it when they bought stuff? And how did they feel about it? So I was watching. I've watched hundreds of hours of Timu hauls. Th some of these videos were super relaxing because there was no talking and there would be like light instrumental music and they're like unboxing cute stuff. It didn't make me want to buy anything. I was just relaxed. Anyways, I pretty quickly got a really clear picture of Timu and the initial video I wanted to make was like the problems with Timu. But as I was saying, there's people who've done it way better than me. And I was like, you know what? Timu is addicting. So many people talk about being addicted to Timu and also just haul after haul after haul. People are buying like, like multiple orders a month, but also orders that are like 25 items, a hundred items. And so I felt like what would be more interesting and perhaps more helpful is this topic of why Timu is addicting because there's so many videos on like the environmental and sustainable and ethical implications of Timu, but not so much about the consumer behavior of Timu, which we're going to talk about today. Timu is addicting by design. It's, de it's designed to maximize the dopamine hit. They've done a lot of clever things, both in like the layout of the website and also the messaging of the website to have maximum dopamine impact. And also, relatedly, to increase your cart spend. So I'm going to talk about why. In this video, I'm going to talk about why that's the case, how they've done that, how they've managed to create this big dopamine powerhouse, and why we love it, why it's addicting. So let's talk about dopamine first. Uh, a lot of why love Timu and in some ways Amazon is the dopamine hit. Let's talk about dopamine first so we're all on the same page as to what I mean when I use it. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter and according to the Queensland Brain Institute, neurotransmitters are often referred to as the body's chemical messengers. They are the molecules used by the nervous system to transmit messages. So in essence, dopamine helps deliver messages to your brain and specific kind of messages though. 
As a neurotransmitter, dopamine is involved in things like movement and memory, behavior and cognition, attention, mood, and most importantly for us today, pleasurable rewards and motivation. Dopamine is part of our reward system. And the Cleveland Health Clinic says that the system is designed from an evolutionary standpoint to reward you when you're doing the things that you need to do to survive, which is things like eat, drink, compete to survive and reproduce. As humans, our brains are hardwired to seek out behaviors that release dopamine in our reward system. When you're doing something pleasurable, your brain releases a large amount of dopamine. You feel good and you seek more of that feeling. In the 21st century, this has gone beyond basic necessities. Companies have gone on to learn about, know about this system, and exploit it and use it to their advantage to create products, apps, services, you know, things that are highly pleasurable, and also create advertising that does the same thing. The important thing to know about dopamine and its function in the reward system is that doing something a few times will, like it will give you a a reward, the dopamine hit, but after a while, your brain makes connections. Doing X thing brings X reward. And you don't actually need the reward in order to kind of make that activity function or to feel good anymore because your brain has made connections that X thing feels good. And so your brain can start anticipating the reward. You've done X thing enough times that your brain knows the reward is coming. So as you step into the shopping mall or you start thinking about doing X thing, your your brain begins to anticipate and you can experience the dopamine rush in the anticipation. Dopamine is part of the habit system as well. It's kind of funny how much dopamine sh- like plays a role into our be- our behavior because something can be undesirable to do, like you don't actually want to do it, and it doesn't like doing the act doesn't give you pleasure anymore, but you still do it because the associations are in your brain. Or these these pathways, these connections have already been forged. Part of what makes addictive behaviors addicting is that they are dopamine powerhouses. Doing things that feel so good, you want to do it again, and you chase that thing. Addictive behaviors or substances, studies, many studies have found, um, and this is kind of like old news at this point, that addictive behaviors release large amounts of dopamine, more than usual, gets people addicted. Spending money is something that has been found to release a lot of dopamine, and When you combine that with other things, you're creating something that becomes even more powerful. So let's now apply this more kind of concretely to our topic at hand today. Shopping and spending money, because those, they do go together, but they don't necessarily have to. They're kind of separate behaviors. These behaviors on their own are things that release large amounts of dopamine. On top of that, there are factors that create little pockets of dopamine. They're they're little power-ups, if you will. These are things that feel good as well. Saving money feels great, especially like sales, deals, and discounts. Low prices, because it means you can buy more stuff. And choice. Timu has all of this in hordes. Timu is running a sale like 365 or 66 days of the year. They're constantly running sales and flash like flash sales, lightning deals, what they call them, on products. And this is a tactic that is used by other retailers too. People who aren't selling things at retail price, like as an example, really common on some somewhere like ThreadUp where they'll say estimated retail price X amount, your price like $6.99 or whatever. This also kind of happens at places like Winners and TJ Maxx. Even if the item is $24.99, you put a cross through like $40 and you put $29.99 and you like, you're not actually saving any money. It's not actually a sale, but you position it like a sale and people will go, wow, and they feel great about it. It makes the product more enticing to 
to consumers. One thing that Timu does way better than Amazon is the lightning deal. Amazon does have lightning deals, but not anything like Timu because so many products on Timu have a lightning deal. You search up any page, any product category, and there's a multiple lightning deals on products in that category. And there's also a limited quantity of products that are available for the lightning deal. So it's not just cheaper price for today, it's cheaper price for a limited time. So they've combined the scarcity tactic of limited edition, limited time only, limited quantity with the, you know, the deal, lightning deal kind of concept. One thing that people have said when they've like purchased or shopped regularly on Timu is that stuff really does sell out. But as I was playing around on Timu, it says the average item is restocked in a day. So they create this false sense of urgency to get you to buy now. And then when you do buy it, you feel great because you're like, oh yes, I secured my item. I did watch Tati's video of on Timu. It's one of the first videos I've seen from her in years. And she talked about how fun it is to like have the rush of buying because you feel like an investigator. Like you feel like you're doing your due diligence and you're finding like you're a hunter. You're a deal hunter. There's so many lightning deals. They're so common. I think consumers will only buy these items or they'll be like, oh, I'll wait till until this item gets on a lightning deal. Or if they're looking for a specific kind of product, like let's say you want to buy, I don't know, a lamp or a a bowl, a decorative bowl, maybe, you'll only look up items that are available for lightning deals. So they are shaping your purchasing into a very specific window. And they're, they're funneling you in like from one dopamine behavior to another. They amp up this factor by putting a countdown clock on the items with the lightning deal, but they also will put messages in your cart. It will tell you like X amount of of items are almost sold out. Like 48 items are almost sold out or 10 items are almost sold out. And they'll say like these items are in this many people's carts. I like full disclosure, I have not purchased anything from Timu, but I wanted to like get a sense of the buying process. So I did add stuff to my cart to kind of see like what that experience might be like. And I'm kind of glad that I did because if I just didn't put anything in my cart, then I would not have seen all of the incessant messages about stuff that are filtered through there. And you know, how, how many minutes are left that this item is in 999 other people's carts. And then when you delete stuff, like each item you delete from your cart, it will tell you the deal history. This is the cheapest price it's been in the past 30 days. They're creating a scarcity factor. It's the cheapest it's ever been. So, I mean, it's not just scarcity factor, but it's the cheapness factor. That's what it tells you. You're getting the best deal possible. So when this thing is $2 and it's the best deal it's been in 30 days, I mean, what kind of... It's a hard thing to to refute these kinds of messages, especially when you're in like a dopamine haze. I I spent like three or four days on Timu adding stuff to cart and like also cataloging how fast stuff sold out. If it did, funny enough, I had like 10 different things in my cart that said that they were the last one or about to sell out for five days. Um, anyways, I was getting a huge dopamine rush without even buying anything. It was wild. I felt like how I used to feel when I shopped all the time. <laughs> because you can add so much to your cart for so cheap. Like, it also makes the process of the cart declutter feel like underwhelming. Because when you are shopping, like literally anywhere else, Let's talk about, I don't know, like a, a clothing store. Like the cheapest stuff, even at fast fashion, like $10 maybe. And so you take one thing out of your cart and it has an impact on your total. When you take out items on your, like from your cart that are like $2, $1.50, it has such a little impact on your overall like cart spend 
that it can seem useless to delete stuff from your cart because it like might as well, might as well have that extra thing, especially if you're feeling so excited and you're like riding the dopamine high, which I found really interesting. I did a, a like a fake cart declutter. I was like, all right, let's pretend I had a $50 budget or $100 budget or like what would I say to talk somebody out of spending this kind of money? And it got increasingly hard because it's like, it's $2. Any any rational argument that I can make, it gets old really fast. Like, do you need it? Do you have something to use already? It, it gets old and it gets less impactful over time. And then in your mind, you say it's only $2. It's only $2. How do you like, how do you rationally Tell yourself not to buy something that is only $2. You view it as a great deal, only $2. It's it's a hard sell. Timu has partnered with so many creators that there are tons of coupon codes out there. So you'll get an even better deal, which is, again, extra wild. The lightning deals and the clock timers play on FOMO as well. And FOMO is a really... Like it's a well-known cultural concept, but there actually aren't a ton of studies on it, but there hasn't been like a ton of data until recently, I would say. And so here's a couple of interesting things about FOMO. In the study of 650 people in the US and Switzerland, researchers found that brand credibility and FOMO exert direct influence on consumers' purchase intentions for fast fashion products. Timu, in my opinion, is like the equivalent of fast fashion, if not like the bottom of the barrel of fast fashion. Like the lowest, like if there was tiers, you know, of like brands, Timu is like lowest tier. We identify that FOMO has a negative moderating effect on the relationship between brand credibility and fast fashion purchase intentions, suggesting that consumers with strong FOMO are less interested in brand credibility when making a purchase decision than those without FOMO. In addition, here's some more information. Different source. About 60% of millennials make purchases as a direct result of FOMO within 24 hours um, out of fear of missing out on a deal or trend, which is in line with the general trend of 60% of like people who make par- who make reactionary purchases because of FOMO. So FOMO shapes, I can't, 60% of people feeling FOMO doesn't equate to 60% of purchases, but 60% of people have made purchases out of a reaction to FOMO, which is a lot. But also what I find really interesting is that people who have FOMO don't care or they care less about where they're buying from when they are like in a a FOMO kind of state of mind. And this is what I've talked about with like spending and even like emotional spending, not quite FOMO, but I think similar things are at play. You are less, like when you're in the throes of wanting stuff, in this case, in the throes of FOMO, you're less critical, you're less cognizant, you're like in a heightened emotional state. So you're not thinking in like a clear, rational way, whether positive, like you're in a positive mood, exciting mood or a negative one. And this this research was part of um, a set of papers I was reading about things like knowledge about sustainability, ethics, and the environment versus buying things that correspond to that value. And this study came to say that 75 to 80% of people are well aware of the environmental, social, and ethical implications of fast fashion, but that does not directly translate into shopping your values, like shopping in a way that supports these like beliefs and knowledge that you have. And this paper was, you know, kind of talking about ideas that I think the word they said was like modulate, but that impact one's purchasing choices to, or that are counter to these like beliefs of sustainability or ethics. And price, of course, is one of them, but also so is FOMO. And so I think that that plays a role here too. If we say, we'll go on the low end of 75, but I think we could arguably say like 80% of people are well aware of baseline implications of fast fashion. People are well aware of the ethical, sustainable um, implications of Timu, but choose to shop it anyways because other things modulate that decision. One of them being FOMO, one of them being the dopamine hit, the rush of the deal, the feel-good experience that T 
Chimu has integrated into their app and to the buying experience. Timu is a very visually stimulating um, experience in ways that Amazon is not. You have tiny pictures of things that are like across the screen. There's lots of colors. There's lots of lightning deal signs like on each like little square. There's pop-ups here and there. It is kind of like being in a casino. Your senses are so stimulated. Timu's decision to have lightning deals and to like shape their deal process in the way that they do is a strategic choice of Timu because research has shown us that scarcity mindset works, that enticing, like deliberately and intentionally in like inducing FOMO in somebody does create results. So they are proven strategies to influence you to buy things and not just to buy things, but to wait less time between adding to cart and purchase. It's extra sneaky given that lightning deals are around all the time and products get restocked daily. So it's artificially placed pressure. So let's talk about price. The price might be the like the predominant factor for what is fueling overconsumption on team. The prices are so low. People, I've heard so many creators be like, wow, these prices are shockingly low. They're so shocked to see the price. And I've heard time and time again, I don't know how these prices are so low. Okay, we're having a moment. You know why. You know why. I do think that what some people are perhaps alluding to is that We've seen this dropship stuff, AliExpress stuff on Amazon. And we also know that Timu is part of this system of fast fashion, like we see Amazon, Walmart, Zara, Forever 21, H&M. Like it's, it's this, the same kinds of manufacturers, the same protocols, the same principles, the same, even some of the same companies. None of that stuff, none of that fast fashion mass produced stuff is as cheap as Timu. That, I think, is what is shocking people the most. And I don't think people fully realize just how cheaply this stuff is made. For a company to make money by charging you $2 for a washi tape. In my eyes, personally, what has happened is it's shown me just how much money companies like Zara and Walmart and H&M, how much they're making. If a very similar product could be sold on Timu for $7 and H&M is selling it for 20, the person at $7 is making a price, the person are making a profit, the person at 20 is just making more. Companies or brands like Zara and H&M have more overhead costs. Timu is a marketplace, and I think people forget that all the time. Timu is not producing the products that they're selling. And so these companies that are selling on Timu, they do not have the overhead that H&M and Zara have or that Walmart has. So that plays into the price, but not significantly. And then all of this stuff that has been shown on Amazon or that has been sold on Amazon, same stuff that is retailing on Timu for $250 is retailing for double, triple, quadruple the price. This low price, I think, is maybe the most problematic thing about Timu because there's lots of implications about like wages and labor and materials that are, you know, driven to that price. But in terms of overconsumption, this is the single thing, in my opinion, that is fueling mass overconsumption. Things are so cheap. You don't have to limit yourself to buy things. You could buy 25 things for $50. You could buy like literally whatever you want. Whatever you could think of, you could buy it. The cheaper price facilitates larger purchases. You're not, people like to say, especially creators, you're saving money on Timu, but that's not really the case if you're just buying more things. A lot of people have commented about how wonderful their shipping is. 
Um, everything, no matter the cost, has free shipping, basically. And then there's like free returns. I don't know what the window is for free returns, but free returns uh, and free shipping. I went to go find like the cheapest stuff that I could, like stuff that was like a quarter or like 80 cents, still free shipping. Here's why this works. You're not going to buy one 80 cent replacement part for your blender. You're not. What you're going to do is you're going to fill your cart with all of the stuff, the stickers and the organizing supplies and the light bulb. I don't know what, well, I don't know what you buy, <laughs> but you buy all of this stuff, right? Like you pack your cart full. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not going to buy the one thing. You're going to buy the cart full of stuff. And so because you don't have to think about shipping, you're going to buy more stuff. And because you don't have to think about returns, you can spend even less time thinking about your purchase because gone are the worries of if I don't like this, if if this doesn't fit, if the quality isn't what I expect, if the item isn't what I expect, I get to return it. The free shipping and the free returns eases like all of the worries that you could have as a consumer. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Timu uses this stuff to entice you to buy more. I bet you if Timu put a $1.99 shipping charge on every individual item, they would see a decline in sales. Or let's say if every item um, under $5 had a shipping charge. So you want to buy, even if it's $1 shipping charge, right? You have a cart full of, let's say, five things. All five of those things are under $5. You're going to be spending $5 on shipping or you need to hit a certain cart spend to um, have free shipping. Uh, It's both easy and difficult to hit $50 cart spend on Timu because one, like if everything's so cheap, you have to buy a lot to get that cart spend, but also everything's so cheap, you buy a lot that like you want to buy a lot. So it's both, it's both of those things. The extremely cheap prices make the lightning deals and the coupon codes from influencers extra like, whoa, my deal now has deals. Also layer in the fact that Timu has stuff in like every category. You can think about it as a category, Timu has stuff in it. So you have not just cheap stuff, but you have cheap stuff in all of the categories. Many items also come in packs. It, I think I was seeing a lot of packs for like jewelry, hair clips, or like hair accessories. Um, some like organizational items. They'll come in packs of like three or maybe like 50 items, like 50 hair ties or five clips, five bows, um, you know, things like that. The These bulk and multi-pack items make the cheap prices, again, feel sweeter. $3.50 for one pen would be a good price, but $4 for five pens is a great price. And so when I was watching these haul videos, I saw so many people, very common, almost like every video, people would say, wow, this was better than I expected. Or I didn't think it would work this well, or I didn't think it would look this good. People are buying stuff that they have low or no expectations for because they can return it. And also people have low expectations because the price is cheap, but also people get to try more stuff when products are cheap. This kind of like pricing facilitates a lot of the buying to try. You buy stuff with just the try in mind. And we're in like a particularly rough economic situation. And so I think a lot of people have been, uh, their budgets are tighter, right? They're purchasing less stuff. It's something like 35% of people last I checked, um, are buying less because of in like inflation and the shit of state of the economy, they're buying less stuff or they're spending less money because of it. And so you introduce a a place like Timu, you get to participate in the try culture. You get to try stuff for fun. And that is almost always a great experience. Like trying stuff for fun is a fun thing to do because it's for fun. And then buying stuff, like the act of buying is a fun, like buying stuff that you want to try, that's a fun experience. So you get to add in all this stuff to cart to try. The $3 lipstick and the $5 pen and the $15 flags, 
the more you enjoy the act of buying, the greater the dopamine hit and the more you'll want to have it again. And then also the more addicting it is. Timu has packaged so many of these dopamine heavy hitters all together to maximize your dopamine experience. I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if people develop shopping addictions from Timu because the experience is so fun. And if you had a budget of $100, let me just give you from a reference. If you had a budget of $100 and the average cost of your item was $3.50, you could buy 28 items. 28 items for $100. People get to shop without many limitations. They can buy whatever they want and as much as they want. And that's a fun thing. If you are somebody who has a shopping problem and you haven't tried Timu, just don't, don't go there. Don't like... Don't check it out. Don't see what the hype is about. Don't do it because it is a very addicting experience. We were talking about the reward system previously. And even if you've never shopped on Timu, like you're on it for the first time, all of your shopping experiences from your past shape your relationship to Timu today. You know, your like your experiences with Amazon, as an example, I think that's like the closest thing that I can think of. Your experience there can create anticipation, even though you've never tried Timu or your past experiences, buying a lot of stuff, um, enjoying shopping, spending lots of money and time or trying new things. Your brain has made connections and remembers all of these things and will shape your experience with Timu. I think the average person would be like, wow, this is great. But if you've ever been in these situations of overspending or like, like having shopping as a hobby or going to retail therapy, your like dopamine little receptors are going to be popping off in your brain because (laughs) you know how that felt. You enjoyed it. And now you have like, it's going to inform this context. The last thing to talk about is aesthetics. So there's two components here. The first is your expectation of what the site looks like. The design of the website, in my opinion, they've used like designs, colors, and layouts that are like, I feel like established looks for like discount retailers or even auction type retailers. So your brain is making these kinds of connections and then also bringing forth the associations that you've had with them. And we kind of like that, I think. I think that people like that and it it plays into how we feel about the price, or I should say, or it plays into our enjoyment of the price because we already have design elements signaling discount, signaling cheap price when we go in there and we're like, yes, affordable or cheap, or I can buy a lot. So you already have that. But then there's Also, I think aesthetic components as well. You have product photos that are aesthetic lifestyle photos. People who have like really well manicured nails. For me, like when it comes to lifestyle products, a cup or a mug or like a stationary item or even like some kind of clothing, uh, paper products, somebody who has nice nails, who's like, you know, displaying it. Um, like they're holding, like you can't see and it's just like somebody holding a mug like this. You're like, ooh, ooh, aesthetic. <laughs> I don't know, is it just me? Nails always do it for me. And when it comes to also things like accessories. So you have these aesthetic lifestyle photos, which are pleasing to look at in itself. But these photos are selling you like potential. Your life could look like this if you had this product. You could be effortless, chic, organized if you had this product. Some of the photos are from influencers. I don't know if it's necessarily like this specific brand has like hired or used like UGC for their stuff or if like at some point there was a real company or not a real, like there was an original company that produced this thing that used UGC or hired somebody and because they're ripping off this product or they're white labeling this product, then they're also using those photos or those real life kind of UGC content. You desire these things for yourself. You 
desire the aesthetic life, the aesthetic backdrop. You want to be different because you're using something different. And I think this plays a role in why we want stuff, why we want the rings or like the stationary products. Not everything is equal. Not every, like we don't all want the same things for the same reasons. Or when we're buying stuff, we don't want all the stuff that we're buying for the exact same reasons. Like so many times people say things like, this is like the it girl bag. And it's like, it's cute and it's aesthetic and you want to have the it girl bag. You want to be more fashionable. You want to be aesthetic yourself. And the haul videos are part of this culture too. You watch the haul videos, gets you excited about the products. So your dopamine sensors are already tingling because these videos are often aesthetic themselves. Not always, but often. So you're going into a situation where you're already like, yes, you're primed. Your dopamine receptors are primed. And then you go into like a dopamine, I don't want to call it a landmine, but you go into a dopamine feast, (laughs) if you will. And then, you know, you go, these videos gives you ideas for things to buy. But when they are aesthetic, when the, our girly friends, when they have the cute nails, they're tapping on things. They have the ASMR videos. They have the ripping, honestly, ripping off plastic might be some of the reasons why I love watching these videos or I find them so um, relaxing. The ripping off the plastic, the showcasing the items with gentle music. It's just so relaxing. And then some of these videos are sponsored. Um, They're sponsored by Timu. The person is talking about this stuff very excitedly. And then you're like, oh yeah, I want the $2 stencil. I want the $2 washi tape. Like how can you say no to a freaking $2 washi tape? Here's the the kind of the last thing to talk about with dopamine and even in some ways addiction. Over time, the substances or activities can change your brain chemistry and you become desensitized to their effects. So you need more stimulation. You need more of that hit in order to get the same effect. So if you're somebody who has been on Timu before and you've shopped, you could have gotten that dopamine hit like instant, instant. But over time, because shopping is an addictive behavior. Not everybody who shops is addicted, but it it is an addictive behavior. In order to get that dopamine hit, you might need to shop for longer. You might need to buy more stuff. You might need to watch more videos. Like you might need more and more time in order to get that hit. Buy things more frequently. And I think that, and I think that this also is driving consumer culture and hyper consumption is that people don't realize how much dopamine drives their decision making or impacts their decision making, I should say. And so you are missing the highs of shopping. Like you can feel low because the high is gone and you want that again and you want to feel that again. And sometimes this is something we can recognize. Other times, not so much. I did not recognize that in myself for a long time. And this is what I think can keep people coming back to Timu. They they crave or miss the, the tons of stimuli, the shopping, the feelings that they get when they're on it. And they want to feel it again. They want to experience it again. So they jump back on and then they click, 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 and they shop around and then they order. And then soon enough, it becomes more frequent. So that's our video for today. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that my video helped explain a little bit about why we enjoy shopping on Timu so much. I would be really curious to hear about your experience with Timu. Um, have you shopped on it? Have you not? Like, have you felt that like pull or that, I don't want to call it addiction. I'm not trying to diagnose anybody, but have you felt that like addictive feeling of the behavior? I'd like to know your thoughts um, in the comments. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again around here soon. I think there's another